Yo, how's it going everybody? This is a commentary run of Deathless Hell Brelshaza. Uh, I've uploaded my Deathless Clears of Legion raids in the past, but I've never actually done a commentary over them, so this is a bit of a first, so bear with me. It's just me talking over uh, the gameplay footage. Uh, so, I was invited to this party. Uh, it's a group of Western Lost Strike oh, oh, oh. players, uh, a few of them. It was uh, three others, as well as four uh, experienced players who have done it in Korea. And they had invited me to join their group through recommendation from Lost Boy, since they were looking for an experienced player that was already, down. you know, deathless prog ready. That was also playing a crit synergy, and I played Pistolier. Uh, Pistolier is an interesting choice. Um, you're probably not going to see a whole lot of them, especially in Hell Mode, because, I mean, the class has a really uh, storied reputation of not being the strongest class, but after the last round of rebalances that essentially revamped Deadeye, uh, it went from, you know, a really mediocre, pretty weak class and build to... Uh, actually a really strong and competitive build and the way they did this was just straight up giving it more damage but also giving it more competitive damage skill options so previously pistoliers only had about three skills that dealt reasonable damage uh, but now they have six skills one of which was a brand new skill that was added and didn't even replace an existing skill called desperado and so the damage uh, on it is actually quite good um in like a potential match uh it's not the highest but the thing about pistolier is that the damage is basically non-stop for the most part uh, it has extremely high consistency across the board in terms of deal um but that's enough about the class that i'm playing uh as far as like the actual time that I spent on this, a couple of people were asking if his deathless was as was faster than the other deathlesses, but um, honestly, no. Uh, the only deathless that might have actually taken me longer was maybe Valton, and Valton's whole circumstance was completely different uh, because Helmod worked very differently at the time in general. I used the time stop there because I wasn't sure if I could actually circle around and honestly there's extra battle items in gate 5 anyways there's not a lot of great places to even use the time stop in the first place uh, so just to be on the safe side because I am playing pistol here and the thing about Deadeye is he does have the lowest level of defense coefficient uh, outside of Bard and Artist without heavy armor uh, at a base defense level so he's very susceptible to taking very high damage and I had to be a bit cautious on him since he's a bit more fragile. And he makes up with this by just being extremely mobile. Uh, having lots of baked in mobility into his skills makes it a very safe playstyle while also being Hitmaster. Uh, but yeah, I, I think outside of Alton, this was probably the second longest amount of time I spent doing a Deathless. Uh, Deathless Vicus actually only took me two tries with a good group of players from one of the hell communities that I'm a part of. Um, we got that on our second poll in the uploaded video that I put. And Clown, uh, we tried for a little while with like just different groups. And eventually I had met Lust Boy and Lust Boy introduced me to his friends Looter and Royd. Uh, and... Me and Lost Boy got our Deathless Clears partied up with uh, with the two of them. And that took actually only one try. So after I had gone from party to party, uh, we got that one. Yeah, and just one try. And that was the uploaded video on YouTube. Uh, so this was kind of interesting. Um, this mech is slightly different. It still occurs at the same HP threshold at 140. Uh, but you'll see that uh, it actually assigns two shapes. And the first, second one's a little bit delayed after the first one, and it's really easy to panic during this, and you go one direction, and you realize that the shape that you have to place is actually on the other side, and you have to like, use fast mobility. We actually had an artist on the previous day uh, who's with us on a different character today, and they uh, made it so easy if you made a mistake going in the wrong direction, you could just take the portal. The artist is actually pretty insane for this particular um, Hell Legion raid. 
See, I actually mistook which shape that I had, but I quickly corrected it and moved it up there. So it's the same thing, but two shapes. And then this is just the big damage interval, just like before, just like normal uh, Brawl Shaza or rather hard Brawl Shaza. Uh, you just try and crank up as much damage as you can here to help push towards 110. But since it is hell mode, uh, you don't just immediately go to 110, <laughs> which some people might be used to as they overgear it more and more. Uh, it's a bit of a DPS segment. So here we're trying to get there. Um, if you can get there with like 1130 plus to spare, you're making pretty good time. Anything beyond that is just cherry on top. Uh, this party, the DPS was very high. And uh, what's funny is because it was deathless attempts, I thought we were using Ether Predator. You can actually see on my bar, I've got the 30 stacks of EP right now. Uh, it turns out that only me and Crincy were using Ether Predator and everyone else was just using their normal setups. Um, which actually, it's a bit of a spoilers ahead of time, but the fact that there was no cool fighter and the damage pacing was so high actually made me really happy about my general performance. This is one of the new patterns that doesn't exist in normal or hard mode. Um, you had to stay really close to her because the moment you get hit by one, it kind of like chain staggers you. And if your support isn't quick to react to that, you, you pretty much just get killed by like the third or fourth one, depending on how squishy your class is. Now this mechanic is a little bit different too. You can see we have colors assigned. So the color you're assigned determines which ball you can hit. So I have a white shape under my feet. So I have to hit the ball that has a white aura. Uh, you can see right now it's on the right. The one on the left has a black pizza. This one has a white pizza. You have to stand in the correct clock, do the stagger. Um, in the in the order that they appear, uh, you really, really cannot afford to use Inanna here. So we, had, we do the mechanic uh, the correct way um, and then head on in. And in here, uh, this thing has a couple of additional patterns, uh, namely the memorization pattern. But ultimately, it's kind of the same uh, as as usual. The only thing that's like kind of scary for some people, and here's the memory thing. The only thing that's sorry coughing a bit that's a bit scary is since we can't see the hp in hell mode um we don't really know when exactly the stagger check appears or when it's time to exit uh so it's mostly just a repetition and intuition uh and number of um thingies that appear since it's hp based so uh the group actually has a pretty good bearing of when the last round of the buffs appear just off of repetition over and over and over and over and over until uh just getting a pretty good idea of just how many there are um and it's pretty important to kind of split the damage like decently here and have like the correct person outside because you know, if you're waiting on one side, the fight just does not move on until both sides are done. Uh, and so an improper balancing of damage kind of leads to a Vicus G1 scenario for people who have done Hell Vicus, where you're kind of just waiting around, not really progressing the fight because of that. So you there, you see it kind of zeroed out. We saw the animation uh, and that was like the cue to get the hell out of there. Uh, this mech is actually really cool how they changed this up as well. This is the Frieza mech. Um, you're going to see it's going to start pretty much exactly uh, the same. And this is like a big damage window too, because she takes full damage during this. So while we break the HP shield and then do the stagger afterwards, we're, we're doing damage at the same time. So usually if you're just doing a regular clear, and you're, there's like, like a great spot to use Atro. Uh, so here's the memorization. I've actually seen many people die to these light beams during Prague and during Deathless as well for greeting too hard and not respecting and not being in those light beams actually hurts. But you're going to see there's a dial there and it's it, it, it's half of a circle that went around her. And you're going to see that the shape that we did that we're standing in is not the shape that appeared in the memorization. That's because the dial that appears around here could either be uh, 90, 180, or 270 degrees filled. And depending on how much it is, it actually rotates the memorized safe pattern and you have to step in the correctly rotated one. So the one that, uh, like one for one, you basically have to visualize the safe spots and then also uh, be ready to rotate it in your head. And, and the guys, they've, they've developed tricks to actually 
memorize it really quickly along the way um so now we're working towards second shapes obviously it's a little bit more dangerous now uh, some of her patterns have been enhanced for example uh you know if she hits people with um the cone and it connects two times she does a third follow-up that kind of stuff uh, it's just bit, just a bit more dangerous and when we were progging this we actually uh utilized slayer quite a bit because we actually learned that those orbs that have a giant radius that eventually detonate you can eliminate them by completely depleting their hit count while they're cc'd so those orbs oh this is another one of the new patterns you have to run away from that that slurry of aoe's uh, getting hit by any one of them gives you a vuln stack and does some damage and the vuln stack increases the amount of subsequent damage you take and those big blasts that uh, she does like three big blasts and it does a lot of damage and actually with like three vuln stacks uh one of those blasts which shoots out pretty fast just kills me 100 to zero uh we learned a lot of different ways to shield this pizza mech as well because it does kind of a significant amount of damage especially in such a long form fight uh that shielding it is basically a necessity and knowing how to navigate around it because uh, you definitely don't want to be taking that kind of damage when this fight is like 16 17 minutes long just for this first gate you know um so we devised a pretty good system of just like moving into the second or third pie and then mitigating accordingly uh these like tethers where red stays together and blue has to separate blue is never an issue but red has caused countless deaths during prog and deathless attempts uh, because failing to actually connect the tethers detonates for like 60 70k damage and when you have like 110,000, it's it's a lot so uh, this uh was a very fast phase so second shapes is replaced by this mech uh which is kind of crazy so we're square right now so i had to memorize that we're square we have to dodge these because you get hit by too many of them you just instantly die it stacks a debuff on you so you have to dodge as much as possible because this mech lasts for quite a while but we still have to memorize the square we have to gather with the square and we were also assigned hexagon so now we got to drop the shape into hexagon but we're gathering with the per per person at three o'clock in the circle so now i'm gathering with that person because we're going into another dimension with them where we have to break this orb and arrow four, four pairs of players had to break the orbs while dodging these exploding orbs which you have to lead saws into by kind of positioning correctly so that the axes pass through them and detonate to create safe spots because they detonate and instantly kill you and you have to dodge all these at the same time while dodging those aoe's and it's kind of scary uh but also you know you have to get through it and also it has a timer around it you can see it kind of ticking around like an argos timer and that's how much time you have to complete this dps check with your partner and obviously some people have to do it with the support because the supports can't do it on their own uh we get through it really fast uh the damage on the group was, was actually really high and now we just wait we're just damaging in the meantime while all four pairs are finishing uh this mechanic is so crazy <laughs> it's so different from anything in the actual fight and it replaces the 50 line second shapes so that's 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 you saw us we were in second shapes uh that's when we placed the safe spots and now we're just dpsing uh and kind of just yeah it's the last leg from 50 lines down to zero now now we're moving all the way to nine o'clock kind of baiting her out getting away from those dangerous one-shot donuts which kill you even in hard mode if you're standing in the donuts so we're just kind of staying away from it dragging her out uh to where it's safe to actually fight her <laughs> that mech uh the 50 line mech in general is it's just such a date <laughs> it took so long to actually master it but we learned a lot of tricks along the way like how to guide the axes and uh just a lot of, a lot of tips that made it a lot easier to prog through it with with less issues uh, but communication is definitely key during that you have to be able to communicate with your partner to know how to navigate the mechanics so that everyone's on the same page because there's also tether and if you break the tether uh players get stunned and then you're stunned you eat axes or exploding balls and you know now you <laughs> it, it just requires communication uh, so you know basically from here on out it's kind of like after uh the 110 pattern with the memorization um the fight is essentially the same except you're fighting in a much smaller quadrant of the map because uh we're trying to avoid fighting in the much more dangerous parts with the donuts uh 
that way the support can stay with us because sometimes some groups will have people kind of pull the orbs away but that's kind of needless when you can just fight in a smaller confined area and no one's damage efficiency is really lost as a result of that but this group's making really good time uh it's way faster than most groups that i've played with so the damage output uh, was really good even with two of us on ether predator it could have even been faster uh, funny thing is, um, the first day that I was playing with these guys, four days prior, they were doing Deathless, and I was actually on Cursed Doll because I just didn't realize that I wasn't using Ether Predator, but everyone else was also on Damage Engraving, so it kind of worked out. Uh, but Ether Predator is a really, really good uh, engraving for Deathless Prog, just because, like, usually you're, you're replacing uh, a needless engraving and gaining defense and if it's cursed all you gain healing efficiency so this is a zero line mech that's basically the same as uh hell vicus zero line mech it's a stagger check where you're fighting in a really small confined space uh if you touch the border you actually get teleported to the other side kind of like the abyssal dungeon of brawl shaza with the mirrors where you port to the other side so it's a big stagger check we can't see the stagger meter either um she's got lots of attacks in a small space and during this you actually have to it's just like the mirror mech you're passing through the other side so you don't get blasted by those lines funny enough just the previous day i had died in a freak accident to those lines because apparently they do like 90 almost 100 000 damage even with ether predator stacks up and it just like instant killed me because i just ported weirdly to the through the wall um a lot of our attack patterns during this are kind of there to push you out as well so a lot of our attacks are designed to send you flying through because if you get sent through the portal too many times you'll also just die but for the most part honestly this mech is kind of a victory lap it is pretty hard to die so you see here that i space directly into the side because the way that i died yesterday is i went to the side at a kind of a weird angle and it didn't actually port me to the side so i kind of just teleported in place <laughs> but yeah you can see the stagger check was done there um it was pretty pretty reasonable not too shabby uh so we just did um a quick check uh, after that for battle items you can see upright fighter upright fighter most damage on a sharpshooter uh second on an arc on the arcana um so just quick check and then go we had assigned all the positions beforehand so we didn't assign anything here this is how you would normally do it in how deathless runs to begin with and anything that has to have any position assignments so gate six this one's the doozy uh and just for the record by the way this uh deathless clear is obviously post balance patch and that's why the dps check seems so lenient uh it's because you know a lot of these classes are just so strong like sharpshooter and, and whatnot um first new pattern she does it right away this is actually a great this is a gimme pattern uh it's such a free pattern some people see the safe spot depending on how far they are away from the boss so if you're close to the boss or far from the boss only one group of people actually sees the safe spot and they have to call it out and that's like the theme of this gate by the way it's just like certain people see certain things and have to communicate accordingly uh, but for the most part even if you stand in it the damage it deals isn't too bad and it's just such a long pattern where she's just kind of standing there uh and it's like free back attack as well so that that's like the that's the best pattern and it's a it's a pattern that's exclusive to hell mode it, it's it's a, it's a great gimme we call it lucky pattern when whenever it appears actually um this pattern funny enough does less damage in hell mode than it does in uh the real thing on item level on item level th those those pizza cones will absolutely blast you if you have no mitigation but it still hurts a bit here uh so you see here we don't go to the blind spot behind her we actually go to the edge of the map and we have pre-position uh spots and the the reason why we do this is because these aoe's spawn underneath your feet and they do like 70 80k damage and all the balls that shoot from the center also do like 70,000 damage so with the reverse controls you have to dodge the puddles under your feet while also dodging the balls but also the puddles that spawn on your feet spawn for the other players in your party as well even though you're in separate dimensions 
So that's why we kind of split up so that nobody overlaps and gets each other killed. These ones, these AOEs and balls, they don't hurt. Um, these, this is just the, the shape viewing. And uh, the unique thing about Helm Mode for this is um, you don't travel with a group here. Everyone gets assigned a shape different from everybody else and stays in this dimension. So everyone's safe spots is different from one another depending on what shape they got. You don't travel together like in normal and hard mode. Uh, so it's a little tricky. Usually deaths from that are because of getting blasted by the balls or AoEs that do so much damage. Uh, we got the gimme pattern there again, which was uh, really nice. Just free damage, basically enough damage, which will just push the tornadoes uh, immediately afterwards. And this is also kind of funny, but because once again, this is a mech that just straight up hurts more in non-hell than it does in hell. But uh, I guess one of the reasons why is it's actually a lot more essential to, um, I guess, manage the uh the buff or the debuff here because you you actually want to um eliminate the the thing on the other side so one person got sent to the other side and uh they saw four orbs on the inner dimension but we saw that it glowed at the three o'clock position on that center tile and so we pinged it for them and they knew that from the four orbs it was the one at the three o'clock that they had to break so that prevented from the giant uh, whirlpool from spawning in which is uh, essential because it's very difficult to DPS the boss, especially if you're entropy while that thing is going on. Uh, we found a good way to handle it if that happens by just dragging her to a far corner away from the orbs, since that's where it, it detonates from one of the four corners of that center tile. But this is definitely more ideal still, nonetheless. So this is the meteor assignment. Uh, it spawns in at the same speed as hard mode so it spawns in slowly but there's a kicker here and the kicker is that in hell mode whenever a golden meteor is assigned the person who has the golden meteor cannot see that they have the golden meteor on them and the other seven players can and so uh you basically have to tell the person who has the golden meteor they have the golden meteor they have to go down because they cannot see that um with some like experience you kind of learn that as the shapes are assigning if you don't see that the golden meteor was assigned to someone else it was assigned to you but uh, it definitely catches you off guard uh, also the way the blue meteor spawn it's the same it's it's every minute however there's a kicker which is in hard mode it spawns like this two meteors then three meteors then four meteors then three meteors then four meteors then three meteors then four meteors and then ad nauseum all the way to the end it alternates between four and three blue meteors every minute uh, in hell mode however it starts with two meteors then three meteors then four meteors and then four meteors forever and so because of that you have to deal with one extra blue meteor on every other drop of blue meteors which means you have to be a lot more careful and a lot more meticulous with how you place those meteors because you have less space to work with uh with potentially broken tiles so here's the first two blue meteors um i actually freaked out a little bit there for a moment because she had done the two fist slam which the knockback from that can actually uh knock you out of the map but fortunately i was in paralysis immunity but i just remember being like kind of scared in general when that happened uh all the all the attacks here for the most part are pretty dangerous this is one of the special counters this is the eye of sauron or the eye counter so one person counters it it's a very fast counter but it's a timed counter and the person who counters it sees a safe spot and then that safe spot all eight players have to gather while dodging attacks these prongs and if you're not standing in the safe spot it basically nukes you and almost one shots you it will one shot you if you're, you're on a squishy uh, you can see there that they had to ping a second safe spot because there's a second like explosion but on the second explosion she also fires a laser that tracks one player and that one player has to kind of guide it away from everyone else and then jump into the safe spot in the last second uh, and this is the other special pattern which is backpack and this one's even weirder um, so she picks a player she shoots lasers those lasers do like 100k damage so if you actually get hit by them it'll basically nuke you and then there's these purple ghosts and if you i don't know how to explain this if you see three purple ghosts that means uh you are not the person uh 
if none of the ghost if, if the ghost is not on you if you see three ghosts and the ghost is on you then everyone has to stack on you after a certain amount of time and if you only see two ghosts that means you're an imposter and you're gonna blow up and if you stand with everyone else you'll knock them out of the safe spot so yeah it's, a, it's like this game of like identifying uh who has to stay away from everyone else versus who has the safe spot and has to guide everyone to it who has the aggro of the laser and has to make sure that they don't get other people killed and the person who has the safe spot can also get aggro of the laser and then you have to guide everyone while kind of placing these puddles in such a way that everyone can jump in at the last second because that yellow aoe at the end is just such a fast knockout that does insane damage or will just straight up knock you out of the map uh, and the, the crazy thing is that Aya Sauron pattern and backpack pattern, there's the gold meteor again. They just instinctively know we're, we're telling them it's them, but they also know because they didn't see it on anyone else. They don't have to 12 o'clock right away, even though they can't see the gold meteor. Um, but yeah, that backpack and Aya Sauron pattern, they seem convoluted. And the funny thing is they're normal patterns. They are not timed. They are not HP based. They're completely random. Uh, this knockout pattern is so much faster, by the way, compared to hard mode. When I went back to hard mode, I was shocked by how slow it was, but it's really fast in hard mode. So you always have to be kind of prepared to dodge it uh, whenever it happens or have a super armor or really anything. Um, but yeah, the Eye of Sword on backpack pattern, they're just these normal patterns and they're, it's completely random and you can have a run that has multiple of them you're gonna have a run that has neither of them it's just pure luck it's just wild because like it's pretty complicated as far as a normal pattern goes because most patterns in lost arc they're one telegraph one dodge they're usually not convoluted and if they are convoluted they're typically like time patterns uh and it's interesting because I, I remember during the live stream they said that Feymine, which at the time of me uploading this video, uh, is coming out in one month's time. They said that Feymine players would struggle with the normal pattern. So it makes me wonder if Feymine is going to have these multi-layered patterns like that because they're definitely a little bit more challenging compared to typical patterns. Um, we're nearing up to the Chanmi pattern. Uh, just a little bit more damage. Okay, she's she's there now. Uh, not much has changed in the beginning part of this um the only thing is the safe spot for the big pizza at the first part of this so normally you stand still for two pizzas the second one you just shimmy to the left a little bit otherwise it's look different and a lot of people um were wondering hey it's hell mode you can't use uh shandy can you and actually you can depending on the timing using shandy might be fine because it regenerates the bar in time anyways like the amount of ideal usages doesn't change and so if you, especially if you're ahead on time using shandy's actually okay and we're, we're quite a bit ahead of on time on this by over a minute um and so we use shandy which makes this uh, super easy um on prog we've had to master doing this at full speed so many times during pulls especially pre-balance patch uh doing it at full speed is definitely very very scary um but it's not too shabby, but there's definitely been lost pulls to it. I've died during this before at full speed. Uh, it, it's, it, it, it's, it's a little tough to work with. So we're on the inner dimension now. Uh, we split up two and two. For the most part, uh, this isn't really any different. Um, you know, the things... We, we had a bit of a mishap there because uh, communications on who was going where. Um, but it kind of worked out, fortunately, during the deathless pull. Uh, but there's like one thing that's different and that's the players on the outside will sometimes see these like things that appear on the tiles and if it does appear that's like a warning that on the other side which we're at right now the tile is going to blow up um which you're going to see right here the tile blows up i use a time stop uh, i know people in chat freaked out about this but that pattern can't actually knock you out of the map so it just looked scarier than it actually was it just does a lot of damage it's like 50 60 thousand damage but it's not too bad and i don't even think the time stop even actually Maybe it did okay. stop the damage, but ultimately it didn't really matter. It was just kind of a waste of a time stop. Uh, but yeah, it, it just targets two tiles. Normally you would just get out of the tile. Here we super armor the explosion at the end, which is a little scary because sometimes there's a bug that um, people who are coming out from that dimension can't see existing things on the ground and they can die from it. And we've died that way during Deathless Pulse before. 
where we we die to just this invisible thing on the ground uh so these site these medusa patterns are actually a lot scarier in in hell mode not because they're any different but actually uh like functionally they're not different however if you fail to do them they actually petrify you um and the petrification is usually not really that big of a deal here's the eye counter again so you can see one of our teammates counter it we're looking for the ping we're doing dps while but I, at this point we're playing a bit more careful because this looks like a good pull there's the ping second slam there's the explosion if you're not in it it pretty much kill you now we're waiting for the second uh safe spot and then we're looking at the head attack marker it's going to be on me so you can see the lasers on me i direct it to the right and i jump in and then there's the explosion uh but yeah um shit, i lost my train of thought now I, I was talking about something and i don't really have chat to tell me uh, we don't have the golden meteor here the golden meteor goes down that way uh, we're just getting a little bit of EPS in. The, that tile down there. There's the warning ping that those tiles are going to break. We can bring the boss all the way up to uh, that side. Um, oh, yeah. The, the Medusa pattern. <laughs> now that I see it. So the reason why that's scary is because she can do the Medusa pattern while you're placing the blue meteors. So let's say she's at 11 o'clock right now, right? And yet you're placing blue meteors at 5 o'clock. But then she does Medusa to look at the Medusa at the same time next to her. You have to stop what you're doing in your travels um that that did a, that also gave me a small heart attack because three of those hands will kill me from full hp and i took like two hands worth of damage i think right there there's another eye counter which you know it's a pretty unlucky run but it is what it is uh people can dps during it so it's not the worst pattern as long as you survive it's just a little scary but yeah let's say you, you had a medusa pattern you have to bring the blue meteor to five o'clock while also looking at 11 o'clock you have to stop your travel to quickly look and then still place the meteor at five o'clock and if you don't respect the pattern it will petrify you along while you're trying to run to it and now you're going to place the blue meteor in like a really haphazard spot and that overlap happens really frequently placing blue meteors but also having to do medusa at the same time so it's like it, it's it's definitely a little bit tricky um but it, it's a pattern that kind of has to be respected uh but yeah once you get to around this point this is kind of like the, the the penultimate step when it comes to deathless brel uh remember the enraged timer started at 20 minutes so we're almost 15 minutes into this fight currently um there's the tornadoes uh so for this because of how urgent and how dangerous the fight is at this stage we definitely don't want the whirlpool so what we try to do is we try to have everyone hold on to the debuff uh unless someone's confident that they got it then they'll tell everyone to wipe the debuff because you don't want to send everybody in because then they can't see where it is but more importantly um while you're on the inside you can't dps so this is valuable dps time so uh if you if you got someone in there also when you success regardless if you count her counter her or not if a counter is available those stupid pineapples appear which for hitmaster not a big deal but for entropy sometimes a big pain in the ass because like okay i countered but I still had to deal with uh, the stupid pineapples, <laughs> which can knock you out of the map, of course. So the, the, they're, they're still dangerous. Uh, so here's backpack again. So uh, honestly, we got these special mechs way more than I thought we would. Um, I Both times that we've gotten this backpack mech, uh, kind of sees the person who sees the, the, back, the, the safe spot. So it's under them. And the other two separate. They get petrified, so they don't get knocked out. And here's another interesting one. So this is the double grab mech. Normally, right, you send people into each of the hands and have one person stand in the outward one, and then you do a stagger check, right? Well, in this one, two very specific players have to go into the hands and they cannot overlap but they cannot see anything and so the players outside have to guide the players that are the targets into the hands without overlapping uh, and our solution to that is spam emote and just pray that the other person who's emoting goes into the other hand because you can see emotes which actually kind of makes it doable which is a really cute way of handling that mech to be honest but yeah it's definitely a little bit tricky because you have to make if you overlap you just you just blow up and die um there i took two ticks that's the two ticks one that i actually kind of had a small heart attack about because again uh, three kills me you saw those did forty-five thousand a pop i've got an hp pool of one hundred and ten thousand. Three of those would just outright kill me from 100 to zero uh but fortunately i got hit by two so it was a little scary um but we survived uh, and now we're kind of like at the home stretch. We're almost at second shapes, which is basically the finish line. And here's second shapes. 
but just like first shapes uh we have to go into the other dimension we cannot use inana here and the scary thing about this is in second shapes your controls are reversed and they might unreverse and they might not unreverse at the last second right there so right in that exact moment your controls can flip on you when you're trying to maneuver away from the puddles and it might flip you so that you start moving back into the puddles you're trying to avoid and countless people die that way and so ultimately it becomes like this thing where it's like you have to be prepared to use a time stop potion because literally two or three like a puddle and two orbs or just any combination of three things will just kill you from 100 to zero so i've seen countless people die from that uh during my my prog of this um, but fortunately, everyone survived here, and we got a pretty lenient uh, safety maneuver pattern overall uh, that wasn't too shabby. So once again, it's a, a shape that's assigned from another individual player. Uh, like three, four players can be assigned from the same shape. You can get assigned your own shape, which is really convenient as well. Then you just follow your own instructions. But um, here we are. We're now at the home stretch. The corners of the map are broken, and now we are working towards 7x. Here's the gimme pattern again. It's nice that we got this here because she can do any pattern here still. Uh, and you'll see that. Um, she can do the knock, the fast knockouts. She can do the double grab. Uh, spoiler, that's actually what happens. Um, and you just have to be careful because obviously the corners of the map are, are locked out. So there's the, there's the wipe out, the fast wipe out. Uh, nice time stop there. And just a little bit of damage. These Medusa patterns are really nice when they're alone and not accompanied by something. Here's the grab. And once again, I get sensitive to the dimensions. So we're both emoting. I move to the left one. Ian safely moves to the right one. And then there's the stagger. <laughs> that method is such a great way of resolving that mech. It's so it, it's a cute way of resolving the mech. And it's very effective because that was a very, very difficult mech to resolve before we learned that emotes could solve it. Just the communication required to not uh, screw that up. But yeah. Uh, we reach 7x here with a minute to spare. And 7x is kind of a victory lap, but it's kind of not. Uh, 7x is a little bit different. We have four main people countering and two substitutes. And the, the main things that are different about 7x is... One, you have to be in proximity of the intercardinals to see if meteors are coming so not everybody sees the flash from the four corners of the screen you actually have to be near it to see the flashes and two the amount of meteors that actually appear is random uh as in one side could have up to three meteors and you could also have no meteors coming from a given direction as well but the thing about this mech, outside of that gimmick, is uh, the amount of HP she has is actually not that much. Meaning, the smartest play here, if you're seriously aiming for Deathless, is simply play it safe. Don't overgreed, because the amount of lasers that are available, well, it's enough to just play it safe. Play it cool, stay clear out of attacks, and just be very meticulous, be slow, move to your positions, because if nobody's there, no one will see those spawn in. So I'm the only person who sees that spawning in right now, uh, because I'm the only one in proximity. It's a red one to get out of the way. The reason why I say it's important to not greed, even though it's like the hell mode raiders mentality, is if you care about the clear, it's better to play it safe than sorry. I've seen so many great players who haven't even gotten the clear on this raid yet. Not because they're bad players or anything but that, but because they're reckless players and they care more about doing the top damage than they care about actually getting the achievement. And that's great and all. That's a fantastic mentality of self-improvement. But at the end of the day, after several hours of wiping, you're just going to want the clear. You just don't want to be in there anymore. Just give me the title with the icon so I can get on with my day instead of being jailed for God knows how many hours. Uh, so that's why I play it super safe. I just go into the position and I wait as soon as the time looks applicable. Uh, the amount of time that we have is still plenty. 
doing a little bit of damage is good and all we squeeze in a bit of damage but the moment it feels like it's time to get into position we just go especially since the boss is on the further side from our side right now it's just better to be safe uh so here actually um no meteors spawn in actually wait here because this is the first time i'm seeing no meteors on my side and i'm just kind of like life just like the life just 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 slap the life emote there and that's what i was thinking at the time but basically we were close to done here there's the zena and then that marks the end of that zena is actually going to push her from seven lines all the way down to close to zero my teammates are actually called to go to the edge here and this is the first time i'm hearing that call even though i've cleared the cell mode a couple times now I, I didn't know that um they go to the edge because it can sometimes be dangerous but now she's at her 1x line uh this is victory lap it, there's that big expanding blue thing which we shield it does damage but it also stuns so you just space it as it hits uh the edge and then there's your damage and uh yeah that's the whole thing uh, all in all about 40 minutes fairly stressful because uh, you need eight people to be just in the right mindset and there's just a lot of different little things that can kill you during that um but very great group of players uh everyone's insane at doing damage the supporters were ridiculous at supporting if you're a dps player in lost ark then you know what it means to have an insane support um and the shot caller uh the sharpshooter uh not the one in the makoko outfit was just on another level to be able to shot call at that level and the also so much harder for uh, this than I did. thank you for bringing me you along. know play at a high level at the same time thank you, thank you that's all. just another breed of raider uh that is beyond me shot calling and playing at that at that level but yeah that's the whole thing i hope you guys enjoyed this commentary video i greatly enjoyed it uh in total i spent four days with this group for two to three hours at a time to get this deathless and it translates to uh ruler of dreams the title